I'm going to program this disk browser. It lets me navigate directories and subdirectories, show lists of the names and their associated icons, and double click to launch an application or to load a document. I'm Hugh, this is Code with Hugh, and this is the first lesson in a new series that will explain disk and file operations using C-sharp and .NET to code this disk browsing utility. To follow along, fire up Visual Studio and create a new .NET project. So I've loaded Visual Studio and I'm ready to start my project. File, new project. I want a desktop project in C-sharp, so C-sharp. Windows Desktop, and here are the options. I want this Windows Forms app next. Give it a name, uh, D tool for disk tool, and next create. And then I just have to wait for Visual Studio to set up my project. Now, let me just make sure that the toolbox is visible. So I'm just going to pin it there so that I'll be able to see the controls when I'm designing my uh, application. Now, in this case, I need two browsing windows. The directory browser will be a tree, so let me drop that onto the form first. Well, let's have a look. Where's the tree down here? Tree view, drop it on. Okay, and the file browser, well, that's going to be a list, so I need to drop a list component alongside. Uh, list, list view. Uh, list view component alongside. Now I'll set the tree view, that's this one, to dock left. So that's down here, dock, and it pops up this little uh, this little widget to let me set the docking. So I dock that left, and and I'll also add a splitter, and that's the little bar between the two windows. So I'll be able to resize them by dragging the splitter, and that will resize the windows. So let me drag a splitter on. There you go. Pop it between the windows, and you can see that's that bar there. Now I'll set the list view to fill. That's the docking again, and that's done by, again, selecting this docking property, clicking the down arrow, and this time I select this middle part, and that selects it to fill the available space. So it resizes itself to take up all the available space on the form. And I want to set the view to details, so that the file names will be shown in a column. Let me do that. So I've selected the uh, list view again, and down here I go to view and details. Uh, better save it. And now I'll add a column with the text file name, and I'll give it a width of 200. So I do that by going up to, again, with the list view still selected, I go up to columns, and I click this little button alongside. And I add a name, so I want the column header to be file name. So uh, that's the text. And width of 200. And click OK. Let me select the tree view again, that's this one, and I'll drag it to resize it. Now I have to make sure that I don't accidentally sec select the splitter when I do that. And then I'll run it to test that it looks the way that I want it. So I'll click the button to run it. Up it pops, there's the splitter there. You can see file name uh, displayed as a column header there. So that looks okay so far. The only thing is maybe the splitter is a bit too narrow. So I'll go back into the designer now, and um, I select the splitter, and I change its uh, width by changing the size width number. So here's the splitter. It's quite tricky to select. Uh, in fact, I think I'll do it down here because it's a bit awkward to select in the form. It's so narrow. I go to the size width. Uh, that's down here. Size, expand it to width. I'll make it... I'll put it six for now. You can put whatever size you actually like. So it's made it a bit wider. Try it again. See if that's easier for me to select. And I think it's just a little bit easier to select there. Okay. So that's okay up to now. 
Now, the first thing I want to do is to add the disk drives A, B, C, D, etc. to the left-hand window. And to save time, I'm going to go away and write the code to do that now. This is what I wrote. It's a function called show drives, and let me quickly walk you through it. It uses the .NET directory class, which provides static methods for manipulating directories on disk. The get logical drives method returns the drive letters of the disks, and I assign these to drives, which is an array of strings. For each drive name in the array, I create a tree view node. That's a new branch of the tree, and I give it the label a drive, which is the disk letter stored in the drives array. The code is placed between a call to begin update and end update. Begin update turns off the redrawing of the tree view so you won't see each node label being added one by one, and end update turns drawing back on again. Now I need to call this function, and to do that I'll select the form, and then I turn to the events page. So making sure the form is selected, I double click the uh, load event handler to set up a method, an empty method. And here in this method, I'm going to call show drives. Here goes show drives. Test it out. And you can see that I've got these two drives uh, listed in the uh, tree control. Now I need some way of adding file names to the list view. Well, I've already, to save time, I've gone away and I've written this show file names method that does exactly that. Um, now, in order for that to be executed, I need to handle a selection. When a disk drive is selected in the tree view, I want that method to uh, be run. So that's called the after select event handle. I'm in the events panel here, double click it, and I will just call my new method show file names. Let's run it to see what happens. And you can see that the file names are shown here for the disk drive directory that's selected in the uh, tree view. Okay, so far so good. I now have all my disks shown in the left window and the file names shown in the right. The main problem, of course, is that so far I'm only displaying the top level directories, the root directories of each disk drive, and what I really want to have is all the subdirectories shown too. So how do I do that? It turns out it's really, really easy. I just need a method to add directory names to the tree view. Once again, I'll go ahead and write the code to save some time. And here it is. This takes a tree node as an argument and makes use of another handy .NET class directory info. I pass the path of a directory to its constructor and it returns an object initialized with information. I test if the specified directory exists. If so, I call the get directories method, which returns an array of directory info objects representing the subtract directories of the current directory, which I assign here to uh, this array. Now, down here in the for each loop, I iterate over that array, creating a new tree node labeled with each subdirectory name, and I add that node to the nodes of the parent directory. That's TN, the node that was passed to this method in the first place. So I just need to call the add dirs method from my show drives method and pass to it a tree node. And let's uh, run it. And now you can see that I've got this ability to expand the subdirectories from the directory, uh, from the disk drive here. But what about the subdirectories that branch off from the first level of subdirectories? How do I show those? Again, it's all very simple. I don't want to add all the subdirectories of all the disks right at the outset because on big disks that could take a very long time. What I really want is to add one level of subdirectory whenever the user expands a node to show any subdirectories in the tree view. So here I am back in the form design, I select the tree view, I want the before expand event handler, I double click that, and to save time I'll just paste in some uh, code that I wrote earlier, and there it is. 
Now here I use the argument E, you can see it's listed here, I use that argument to um, find the node that's about to be expanded when the user clicks on a node in the tree view. Then I just find its nodes, that's the subdirectory names, and, and add any subdirectories that may exist to each node. Now I can tell there are subdirectories because there's a little plus sign that will be shown before the directory name. So let's try this now to see if I've done it right, which I hope I have. And here's a little plus sign to show that uh, the top level disk has subdirectories. But now you can see there are also plus signs on the subdirectories and I can expand those and drill down into the other subdirectories until I come to some without any plus signs which shows that there aren't any uh, subdirectories beneath them. So those with a uh, plus sign have subdirectories, those without don't. When I expand one of those directories, one of the ones that's got a plus sign by it, my before expand event handler method goes away and it adds another level of subdirectories when they exist so I can carry on drilling down into multi levels of subdirectories. Now, just in case you've got lost in all this, let me show you all the code that I've written. So here it is. This is my show file names method that populated the list view with file names, the add dirs method that added directories, the show drives method, which started everything off by showing the drive letters. And then I've got some uh, methods down here to call those and finally the before expand method, which I've just written. So you can see here with really quite little code, I've already programmed a pretty decent disk browsing tool. There are a few more things I want to do yet though. I want to show icons alongside the file names and I want to display file details such as the sizes and attributes. And most important of all, I want to be able to double click a file name in order to launch the selected application or load a document. I'll explain how to do all those things in some more videos coming soon. To make sure you don't miss any videos, subscribe to my channel and click the bell. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you again soon for more.